The following is a production of New Mexico State University. Welcome to another episode of Long Live La Familia, the nutrition soap opera series that speaks not only to our hearts, but also to our appetites. I'm Carrie Bachman. If you've been with us before, you'll remember the Sierra family, the focus of our series. Today's episode is called La Diabetes, a matter of balance, and so we're looking at the issue of diabetes. Well, featured in the episode today are Lisa and her brother Samuel. Samuel has just been diagnosed with diabetes, and Lisa's boyfriend has the illness. And it's interesting to see the contrast between how the two of them deal with diabetes. Now, you'll remember that we, our episodes are a mixture of English and Spanish. But don't worry if you don't speak any Spanish at all. With just English, you'll be able to understand all of the concepts perfectly well. We have our episode broken up into three segments, and that means it'll give us some time to get back together and talk about what we've seen and relate it also to our own lives. Now we always make a recipe with our, um, with our episode, and so today I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands and explain to you all while I'm doing that a little bit about diabetes. Diabetes is an illness that used to be considered just something that older people got. But more and more, we're seeing it in younger people and even in children. Diabetes is caused when the body is unable to process carbohydrates that we eat. And carbohydrates are important because they give us energy. When we eat them, they turn into glucose or blood sugar. And when that blood sugar or glucose doesn't get into the cells that use it for energy, it stays in the bloodstream, and it can cause all kinds of problems. Now the body produces a substance called insulin, which is the key that lets the carbohydrate or the glucose into the cells. With people who have diabetes, the insulin isn't functioning properly, and so they're not able to get enough carbohydrate or glucose into their cells. That makes it really challenging for them, because then their, their bodies are starved for carbohydrate. All of the glucose that is in their blood then can cause some complications, just such as kidney disease, kidney failure, and also um, problems with circulation in your limbs, such as feet, which can lead to amputations, and also blindness too, because your blood is not circulated, your blood has too much glucose in it. So there are many reasons to be concerned if you have diabetes. But luckily, there's a lot of things that can be done related to diet to help people deal with their diabetes. Now, in our first segment, as we watch it here, take a look and see what the stresses are that Samuel is feeling as he's trying to deal with the, the thought that he has diabetes. Let's go ahead and watch. Normally you're early. Uh, lo siento cuando llegar a tiempo. I was closing a deal and it took a little longer than I expected. Nothing's wrong at home, is it? No, todo está bien. Menos uh, yo y esta dieta. Samuel, are you still struggling with what you eat? How's it there, cuñado? That is what I wanted to tell you. She's pregnant. Felicidades. You must all be so excited. The thing is, I'm worried. 
I want to live to see this baby grow up. ¿Por qué te preocupa que te vayas a morir? Pues ya sabes que tengo diabetes. Forget, I have diabetes too. Pero aún con la diabetes, yo pienso vivir muchos años más. I'm going to live to see my kids have kids. No entiendes, Craig. I can't control what I eat. En el trabajo, sin darme cuenta, me como una caja entera de donuts. In the home, I keep a hidden stash of junk food. I feel so guilty. Uno no puede cambiar todo tan rápido. It takes time to change. Pero tengo que cambiar. What if something were to happen to me? ¿Quién va a cuidar mis hijos si me enfermo? Calmate, mano. It can't be that bad. Are you sure, Ah, sí, por favor. Siempre pido la misma cosa. This is the only place in town I can get nopales. Diet Coke? Normalmente los hombres no toman refrescos dietéticos. Aquí tiene su té helado. Thank you. Are we ready for your order? Sí. Al menos yo estoy lista. I'll have the um, red chicken enchilada plate. And um, don't fry the tortillas, please. Y solo un poquitito de queso. And then I want a side order of uh, frijoles de la olla. You know, a whole beans with a little bit of green chili. That's all. You're sure taking a long time with that menu, Miguel? Como nunca he venido aquí, no conozco el menu. ¿Cómo está el tatio aquí? Ah, oh, they make the best green chiles, too. Lo preparan con muchas verduras. Entonces el tatio, por favor. That should be to him. ¿Por qué te preocupas por los carbohidratos? ¿Tienes diabetes? Te ves tan sano. Well, anybody can get diabetes. Did you notice how stressed out Samuel is with his diagnosis of diabetes? It's interesting to compare him with his brother-in-law, Craig, who also has diabetes, and with Lisa's boyfriend, Miguel. One thing that came out in that last segment was that when you're eating and you have diabetes, a healthy diet for people with diabetes is not so different from a healthy diet for people who don't have diabetes. And that comes in really handy, actually, because when you're in a family where some people have diabetes and others don't, you want to make sure that the person who has the illness doesn't feel left out. And all of you can make some healthy changes to your diet that will help the health of everybody. Now, there are a couple of differences in terms of looking at foods when you have diabetes. And in fact, what I want to show you right now is a different version of the food guide pyramid. It's called the diabetes food guide pyramid. And actually, as you'll see, it looks quite a bit like the regular food guide pyramid. The shape is the same. The food groups are pretty much divided up the same way. But there are a couple of very important differences. The first difference that you'll notice is that the bottom level of the pyramid, which is normally the grains group, has some other foods added to it. It includes also beans and starchy vegetables. And that's because those foods are high in carbohydrate, just like grains are. So you want to go ahead and put dry beans down into the grains group, as well as starchy vegetables like corn. Now the vegetables group then includes vegetables that are not starchy. The fruits group is pretty much the same. The milk group includes liquid milk and yogurt, but cheese actually is moved over into the meat and others group. That's because cheese itself doesn't have too much carbohydrate in it. And then at the tip, we also have the fat, sweets, and alcohol, as we do in the regular food guide pyramid. Now, when we, want, when we look at the food guide pyramid, it's important to look at the individual food groups and how they affect blood glucose. Remember that foods that are high in carbohydrate will affect blood glucose more than foods that are lower in carbohydrate. That's why Miguel was looking at the menu so carefully. When you look at the food groups here, 
We've got them all listed, and you can see that there are some food groups that have a very large effect on blood glucose because they are high in carbohydrate. Those are the groups, the grains, beans, and starchy vegetables, the fruits, and the milk group. Now, groups that have a small effect on carbohydrate, or on blood glucose, rather, are the vegetables, the meat and others, and the fats. The sweets group is actually going to have a large effect on blood glucose because it generally contains a fair amount of sweeteners, which are carbohydrate. Now, when you're looking at the food groups, the other thing to keep in mind is portion sizes. And we don't have time to go into that in great detail today. If you'd like more information about portion sizes, and also, as well, a copy of the Diabetes Food Guide Pyramid, you can give us a call at the number on your screen, toll free. Now, we're going to go ahead and introduce the recipe that we're making today. And it is for an ambrosia fruit dip. And I've selected it because it's using artificial sweeteners, which we'll talk more about at the next break. First thing I want to discuss with you, though, is that we're using some cream cheese as the basis for our dip. We've used cream cheese before in our recipes. And you can have a, there are many selections. What I've chosen here today is fat-free cream cheese. You can also, if you like a cream cheese with a little bit more fat and a little different taste, you can choose this Neufchatel which has a third less fat than regular cream cheese. Either one will work just fine. Well, we'll get back to the recipe in a few minutes. Let's go ahead and watch the next segment of our episode. As you're watching, take a look at how the people in the episode balance their food choices between foods that are higher in carbohydrate and foods that are lower in carbohydrate. It's easier for you to eat right, Craig. Your family's eating the same foods you are. In tu familia, los demás siguen comiendo igual que antes. Y tu eres el único que ha cambiado? Si. Yo no aguanto más lechuga. Especially when everyone else gets to eat the good verduras. And you should see what they feed me for dessert. Lo demás, comen pastel. Yo, gelatina dietética. I'm not allowed any sugar anymore. No te permiten comer nada de azúcar? It sounds like Samuel's family doesn't really understand how to help him. Voy a hablar con Adela a ver si lo puedo explicar un poco sobre la diabetes. I just try to eat right so I can keep my blood sugars in a healthy range. Uh, no es tan diferente de tu manera de comer, Lisa. You mean if you follow the food guide pyramid like I do, you can help your diabetes? Seguir la pirámide de alimentos me ha ayudado mucho con la diabetes. I just have to plan my meals a little more carefully by balancing certain foods. No entiendo. Me estás diciendo que tienes que comer huevos con tus papitas en la mañana? Exactamente. Balanceo la comida que aumenta el azúcar en la sangre con las que no la aumenta. You mean some foods raise your blood sugar more than others? Entonces, ¿qué haces si vienes a un restaurante y te da de más? I mean, you know, what if they give you too much beans and rice? I just take what's left to go. Me lo llevo para la casa para comer después. Ay, como extraño esta comida. Adela feeds me like a rabbit. But I promise, Craig, this is the last time I break my diet. Hey, Samuel, no hables así. ¿Tú crees que es posible vivir el resto de la vida sin comer otra sopa pía? You can't just give up everything you love. Pero, Craig, necesito dejar de comer todo lo que sea comida grasosa. Y todo, y toda clase de dulce. I don't have a choice. Yes, you do have a choice. It's really just a matter of balance and planning ahead to fit in your favorite foods. Hoy puedo comer así y mañana no como nada más que lechuga. Now you can't eat like a pig today and a rabbit tomorrow. La idea es balancear tu comida cada vez que comes. Mira mi plato. It has a little bit of everything. 
Bueno, pero mi plato también tiene una variedad de comida, ¿no crees? You can see that when you have diabetes, it's important to try to balance the foods within a meal between foods that are higher in carbohydrate and foods that are lower in carbohydrate. That's what Miguel and um, Craig were actually trying to do when they're ordering. Now let's take a look at how you can actually bring this into your own life a little bit. There's a method we can use called the 50-50 method. Now if you think of a plate, divide the plate in half, 50% of the plate is going to be for higher carbohydrate foods and 50% of the plate will be for lower carbohydrate foods. Let's look at an example of how that can work. I've got an example here of a meal that is focused around a bean burrito. Now on our high carb side of the plate, which is the left side here, we have a flour tortilla and one half cup of refried beans. So that gives us a total of three servings of high carb foods. On the low carb side of our plate, we have half a cup of diced tomato, half a cup of chopped lettuce, one cup of jicama, which we eat as a snack kind of on the side, and then half a cup of grated cheese. The total here comes to three and a half servings of low carb foods. So you can see that we've actually balanced out the high carb foods with the low carb foods. Now the reason this is a good idea to do is when you balance your plate like this, you're, you'll be assured that you're not eating too many high carb foods in the same meal. That can make it harder for your body to um, process those carbohydrate and can lead to a higher, a larger jump in blood glucose. It's not that the protein foods actually counteract the high carb foods, but the fact that you're eating foods that are higher in protein, fiber, and fat will kind of give you a sense of fullness and then you won't be so inclined to eat very high carb foods at the same time. So you want to try to balance out those two sides of your plate. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our recipe here that we're preparing. I showed you before we've got our cream cheese here in this bowl and we're going to make a dip called ambrosia fruit dip. And a dip for fruit you might guess is normally going to be sweet. When you're working with people with diabetes, sugar can be one of the sources of carbohydrate in the diet. It's not the only source, and you don't have to get rid of all sugar. But it, is, it does come in handy to use artificial sweeteners from time to time. I've got a couple of them here today. There are many more that you can find in the store. Splenda is one of the newer artificial sweeteners, and it actually uses a, a food called sucralose, a substance called sucralose that makes it sweet. And another type that you can use, you can find store brands of these now, is an aspartame-based sweetener, which is often called Equal or Natrataste. This is actually the store brand of that. And the reason I've got these two different versions here is you can see this one here measures just like sugar does, whereas this one is actually much sweeter than sugar. So when you're using this one, you want to make sure that you pay attention to how this can substitute for sugar. In our recipe, what we're going to do today is add about about a half a cup of sugar, sugar and what that translates into as a sugar substitute depends on which one of these we're using. So because this one measures just like sugar, you can add half a cup of this one or do the math and add 10 or 12 of these packets because each packet here is equal to two teaspoons of sugar in terms of sweetness. So I've already dumped 10 packets into this bowl right here. We're going to go ahead and dump these in here and what I recommend is putting that in and mixing it with your other ingredients and then at the end tasting to see if you need to add any more sweetener. Now we'll go ahead and take a look at our next segment as you're watching. Think about the ways that you see in the segment that Samuel can really help deal positively with his diabetes. Do you have diabetes in your family? 
Um, sí, my brother-in-law has had, had diabetes for a while. Y mi hermano Samuel le dio diabetes recientemente. Ahora, él no debe comer nada que contenga azúcar. Well, actually, people with diabetes can eat some sugar. There's many myths about diabetes. Es importante informarse para poder cuidarse bien. Miguel, you seem to be very well informed. Hey, would you be willing to talk to my brother Samuel about diabetes? Ha estado tan deprimido. Quizás tú le, le puedas ayudar. Lisa, ¿me vas a presentar a tu familia? I'd be honored to meet your brother. You know, Samuel, you also need to think about your son. Si Chuy debe cambiar, es posible que él también cambie sus hábitos. Yeah, I heard that diabetes runs in families. Yo no quiero que mi hijo sufra como yo. Why don't you come with me to my support group? In nuestro grupo, platicamos sobre temas relacionados con diabetes. I don't know. Un grupo de apoyo. No suena como algo para mí. Samuel, we're just a bunch of guys who get together to hang out and talk. Well... Hasta tenemos un equipo de softball, and we're always shooting hoops. Entonces, son los deportes los que te han ayudado a perder un poco de peso. You know, I never really like going to the gym much. Cuñado, I can see where you're such a successful car dealer. <laughs> a ver si yo también me junto con el grupo. Desde cuando tú trabajas aquí, I see you here at Las Trancas all the time, but as a customer. Well, my grad assistant salary just wasn't enough. Hay que pagar los biles. Did you notice that Lisa was here? Parece que es mi cuñada. Come on over. Gracias, Santiago. La comida estuvo bien deliciosa, como siempre. Otra vez, este amigo de Lisa. Is this someone I should know about? Hey, how are you, Lisa? Hey! Miguel, ¿cómo estás? We missed you at our last meeting. Cuñado, hermano. Miguel, this is my brother-in-law, Craig, and my brother, Samuel. Mucho gusto, Samuel. Nice to see you, Craig. Miguel y yo nos conocimos. Somos miembros del mismo grupo de apoyo para la diabetes. Ah, Craig was just telling me about your group. I'll see you at the next meeting, Miguel. Ay, qué bueno. El grupo le ayudará a Samuel a controlar su diabetes. Now that you met half the family, I'm Santiago. I'm Lisa's younger brother. Ah. Válgame Dios, tú y Lisa son hermanos. It's nice to meet you, Santiago. No nos vimos la otra noche. You two have been out to eat, I think. That was our first date. Our first in many, I hope. Me alegro verte tan feliz, Lisa. Did you pick up a couple of ideas about how Samuel can deal a little healthier with his diabetes? Well, one thing he can do is join the support group that Craig mentioned, and he looks like he's planning to do that. One of the things that was mentioned there, too, was physical activity, and I wanted to stress that that is very important for people who have diabetes. Physical activity helps your body process blood glucose more efficiently, so you can actually, actually deal better with the carbohydrates that you're eating. Another thing that will help Samuel is thinking about his son and being a healthy role model for him so that he doesn't end up getting diabetes. Let's go ahead and finish our recipe real quickly here. I've gone ahead and chopped up some fruit here. We've got two different kinds of apples and pears as well, just real colorful. And these are favorites of both adults and kids. We've got eight ounces of cream cheese and our sweetener here. We're gonna use a bean masher. And I'm also gonna measure in one cup of yogurt. This is just plain yogurt. And when you're using yogurt, it's nice to use plain yogurt because you can add your own sweetener, either artificial or a small amount of sugar or honey, and then you don't actually end up using quite a, having quite as much carbohydrate. So we'll use a cup of this plain yogurt. I'm using low fat here today. You can use non-fat if you'd like. And then one teaspoon of grated orange rind. You can see I've grated this up ahead of time. It's really pretty. This adds a nice zing to our recipe. When you're grating, just use the small holes on your grater. And once you've grated all of the yellow part of the orange, of the, 
of the lemon off, you can use your lemon for juice to put on the apples so that they don't get discolored. Okay, so we've got all of this here now. The one last thing that we need is one teaspoon of vanilla. And then all we're gonna do is mix this up with our bean masher. You wanna have this, um, the cream cheese at room temperature because that will help everything mix together a little bit better. Now let's think as I'm mixing here about what a goal could be after having watched this episode. Do you have diabetes? Well then you might want to set a goal of using the diabetes food guide pyramid and or the 50-50 method when you're planning your meals for the next week. And one way to do that is actually using a meals and snacks planner. Again, you can call us if you'd like one of these or make one yourself. Basically, you just list all of the meals and snacks that you have for the day. And then on the left side, put high carbohydrate foods. On the right side, put low carb foods. And it's a kind of a way of using the 50-50 method over the course of a day to make sure that you're getting the right amount of servings of the foods that you need. Now the dip is coming together a little well, a little here. If you've got a hand mixer, that can actually work real well too. One thing I'm realizing is I might have wanted to go ahead and mash up the cream cheese before I put in the yogurt so that I didn't have so many lumps. But regardless of lumps, it'll still taste delicious. Now like I mentioned, we want to go ahead and have a taste of this using a clean spoon each time and see, hmm, sweetness wise, that's very good. I don't need to add any more sweetener. You can also use this as a topping for cakes or breads, and it's a really healthy alternative to some of those cream cheese products that you can get in the grocery store. Okay, well, I'm glad that you've been able to join us today for our episode dealing with diabetes, and I hope that you've learned some things and will be able to achieve the goal that you've set over the next week. Remember, as you're working with diabetes, Eating healthy and physical activity go hand in hand. Until next time, long live our families. The proceeding was a production of New Mexico State University. The views and opinions in this program are those of the author and do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of the NMSU Board of Regents.